I mean, it's, it's extremely important to, to try and distance yourself from, from what's going on. And in this incident, you know, you have, you have an incident of a killing. Five enemies have been, you know, slain. And there's a question whether the soldiers went over the line or whether, you know, they didn't, whether they were just defending their lives and the lives of their, you know, their friends. Um, and the film, I mean, no one really knows except for the three people that were in that situation. And I'm wondering whether they know at all themselves exactly what was going on. Um, Things happen very quickly, and that's for sure. Well, it does, but, you know, it, it also happens in in a very controlled way in, in war sometimes. But there's so much adrenaline, there's so much fear but there's also a desire to kill, to get that relief, to be the one that can tell your friends back at, you know, when you have to train the new recruits to go out that, you know, I did it, I did the ultimate thing, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the badass on the block, you know. There certainly was a lot of, um, amongst the soldiers, talk of they wanted to experience it, you know, they, they've been on lots of patrols, it's been quite tedious, quite boring, some of the previous action has been quite long distance. In the film, after this last major clash that's when a lot of the, them were saying that this was it now i feel like i've been to war did you find there was sort of a, a, a hunt a chase for for experiencing this kind of action amongst the troops definitely i mean it's all about you know getting out there and putting yourself in a situation where you get a real you know you get a reality kick out of life uh and scratching that you know fine surface of the polished civilized self and and finding out what's what's the grittiness underneath that and i think you know we can all relate to those things it's it's that's a question of you know it's also a part of our sexuality i think that you know even th and that's clear in the film the soldiers are watching porn i mean it's not just because they're bored but it's also part of the same kind of you know what's what's underneath underneath our, our surface you know and the primal human instincts coming out it's very primal. I mean, war is extremely primal, and um, and in there is that you know dark, scary brutality that's that's put to work on the edge of what we are trying to protect as our idea of the civilized. I mean, it, that's not civilized, and it's always been like that. You can look at imp you know imperialism and colonialism, and it's it, it's the same thing. Did you find um, that this experience changed you as well? Did you find your perspective on things personally changed, um, just like the soldiers, they were chasing sort of an adrenaline uh, kick. Did you find um, sort of a similar type of heightened experience when you were there lying in the trenches with them as well, feeling the bullets pass you? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, coming back to your questions about being embedded, I it was important for me to use my emotions to try and know what the soldiers were feeling. So I was also feeling, you know, relief when we dropped an air bomb on something. I think then coming back to the camp, I was able to think about what does this mean in a bigger perspective? I mean, there's probably civilians on the other end or, you know, sometimes there are and, and you know, is this a good way forwards? And, and I remember coming back to the camp after the killing of these five people Everyone wanted to, you know, touch the weapons that they'd removed from the, from the battlefield and pose with them. And, it, you know, they'd taken a scalp. And if they'd been there for a year more, probably they would have cut the guy's ears off, you know, <laughs> made a necklace. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. I mean, I know it sounds radical, but it is that mental process that's at stake. It's just a question of how far it goes. I found myself going to pick up one of these guns. And I think I even managed to pick it up and then thinking what the fuck are you doing? I mean, this last, you know, probably that dead guy's brain is still on on here. I mean, this is, it was such a, a, a moment of realizing that, you know, this is, this is, this is dark. This is, this is not fun, you know. I'm not going to, I mean, it's not for me to pick up this gun. I'm not part of it. I'm not a soldier. I don't want to go there. There the filmmaker returned in you. I think it did very much, and I think also, I mean, the fact that I'm 15 years older than all the soldiers gives me another positioning um, 
in that situation um and um yeah but i you know i i think that when i went to afghanistan i re i i imagined that we would all you know experience combat and get scared and wet ourselves and run back home and and you know return to denmark traumatized from the experience of war and and that's not what you know i experienced in afghanistan i experienced to a large extent that people were trying to handle the situation that there was a very large degree of professionalization around emotions that people either shut down and didn't talk about it because it was too scary or it was ritualized in speeches and um and uh you know these types of of procedures when someone's dead and you do a ramp ceremony and uh, all this you know grandeur around emotion and death so you have the taboo or you have a theater or you have complete um what you call it um uh distancing and um you know that frustrated me in a long time because i think jesus these guys are so correct they're so like they don't engage with it they don't they don't realize what they're in the middle of they don't relate to it they don't they've no emotions what do you think this was partly to do with a, a survival instinct to to not let it get to them too much it had definitely a lot to do with the survival instinct because i was a threat when i started talking to them about emotions i felt you know that was a dangerous place for them to go but it also had a lot to do with the fact and and that's where i thought you know the film got scary and and very um disturbing that you know we're actually capable of this we can do this without any you know necessarily any bigger sort of emotional response to that to the killings to the death to the the futility of the situation soldiers can go and they can do a job as soldiers and they can come back and most of them are actually all right did, did and that, and that's scary i mean you're going out and you're killing people and you're coming back back and you're fine and and this is i mean this is a disturbing fact of the way that we are capable of violence and are capable of of making war and and it's reproducing the whole sort of rhetorics and legitimacy of war in a sense um because we keep the these stories about the hero and about the uh, you know it's either the hero that can do things for the cause of the greater good uh, or it's the traumatized sto- soldier which is a left wing fantasy of the good sort of open human being that gets traumatized but in between there's there's like you know there's brutality and that brutality is ritualized and and excluded in a sense from from our uh legitimate experiences of war that's why what soldiers can't share when they come back and that's why it was important for Amadillo to make a very raw account of of the war to to talk about all the gray zones to talk about all the human spillover that is you know being negotiated in that situation all the time and that's where darkness is that's where violence is that's where maybe something that is you know ultimately very very human is played out which has got to do with brutalization of the mind brutalization of the situation dehumanization of yourself and the people that you're there to help or the people that you're fighting and 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 that is a very disturbing image when you look closely at that now um this whole film one one of the things which a lot of people have picked up on is the very cinematic narrative feel it it feels like almost watching a, a hollywood movie in the best of senses um was this a conscious aesthetic decision you you had from the beginning I mean, you've talked a bit about some of the uh the vietnam the classic vietnam movies as sort of a, a source of um reference or inspiration in some way um but how did the aesthetic uh emerge for the film Well just to close off this the 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 thing about inspiration or reference I mean everything is I use everything everything is an inspiration to me I mean the worst sort of TV uh programming about Afghanistan is also an inspiration in a sense that you know you get some kind of idea about what the place looks like and what you know but you also get an idea of how media represents the situation uh and you get an idea of if you watch like Ross Kemp in Afghanistan the kinds of I would call um 
almost propaganda that goes into representing or controlling the image of that war. Um, so, you know, it's not that I'm taking my material and saying, okay, I want to make apocalypse now in Afghanistan, but I'm looking at Afghanistan and I'm seeing, you know, there's an apocalypse now type of story unfolding here. How have other people worked with that and, you know, an exploration of that theme? Um, when we talk about cinematography, and that actually, as you said yourself, is connected to this discussion, you can see how TV represents a reality in Afghanistan, which has got very much to do with trying to get close to a concrete representation of how realism in a TV conventional way should look from that place in order to give us an understanding of how it really is. But when you're talking about reality, you're talking about something that's extremely complex. You're talking about perceptions. You're talking also about psychology and mentality and even hyper-realities such as, you know, what does it mean that soldiers that go to war have already seen so many war films, have played computer games, have heard stories from other soldiers, have watched news, they, you know, in a sense, through their mediated experiences, already know what the situation is going to be and what's expected of them and how a good soldier is supposed to behave in that situation. How do all these things, how do all these mediated experiences spill into the situation? So partly, I mean, we're working with an epic scope in terms of using big cameras, big skies, um, trying to talk about you know, a journey of becoming. What does it mean to venture into the unknown and meet something maybe, you know, inside yourself that, that is an exploration of your own uh, sort of chaotic human insights. Um, you know, something that's beyond the, you know, the, the point where we've made sense of ourselves. That's a very epic story, that's a, a mythological story, it's even a religious story if you want to look at it in that way. Um, and, and harnessing cinema, if you know, if you can use images, which film at the end of the day to me are their images, I mean, and that's where I think often journalism and film is, separates, uh, is separated from each other. Journalism is as far as I see it, much more occupied with words and film is much more occupied with images. So you need to, you need, I, I mean, for me, the image is strong. The image shows you, is, you know, has, a, is a much more complex um, information source. Um, and the epic, the epic uh, scope of cinema can be used to go behind the immediate, in a sense, to point out the psychological, the the, men, the mental changes, the you know the the challenges to character, the challenges of the situation, and and it presents a very open space for a viewer as well.